today we're going to be taking this junkyard axle and turning it into this. Now I've got a list of stuff we got to go through on this axle before we get it installed on our 1987 Project Jeep Cherokee. So let's get to it. Here I made a list of video highlights of things I'll be doing throughout this video. Go ahead and skip forward if you are interested in any of these specific items. I'll also have the links listed in the comment box and the description box below. But the first one we're going to be working on is replacing upper control arm bushings. Using my press to press out the center pin of the bushing. This pin that was in the bushing is about the width of the blade for my sawzall. So I was able to get the sawzall on here and make one cut. That's the piece we're after. So the idea is to kind of crush this enough to where it's loose enough in there, I could just hammer it out. You can see where I made the cut right there across and you can see it didn't even go all the way through the bushing to be enough to force it out of the hole. We're gonna go ahead and use my press to press this in. I may lube the outside of this just so it kind of helps ease it in. Maybe even take some emery cloth and just kind of buff this down with a really high end grit, like a 500 grit. All right, so here you can see I got my socket wrench and all set up. It's starting to get crooked but uh, it is starting to go in, so that's good news. It's not gonna fight us going in. All right, so there you have the second bushing is installed and I'm really happy with that. Let's move on to the next project. All right, so the next thing is we need to get the hub and the backing plate off so we can pull this axle out to replace this frozen U-joint. I'll leave a link in the description box for that if you're interested in the puller. Definitely helped out on that other side. But we're going to have to remove this side as well. I'm going to go ahead and remove this piece right here. Now when you pull these caps off, you want to make sure there's markings on the cast of the housing and on the cap. And then this one will go with this one. See how they're upside down? This way when you go to reassemble the caps, you'll have them on the right bearings on the right side of the carrier. I took a chance on this axle for a hundred bucks and I just don't know enough about it. So we're going to open it up and take a look. Now there's a C-clip right here holding in the inner drive shaft for the CAD side of the axle. We're going to have to remove this C-clip. So that's the C-clip. All I have to do now is go on the inside and pull that shaft out. And here's the axle shaft. So I'm going to go ahead and set this with the other axle shafts. So there's going to be a little trick. I can put this pry bar here behind this bolt and then rotate the pinion clockwise and you can see the bearings come out. See how it just forces it out. And there we have it. You wanna be careful not to drop this on anything. I'm gonna set it right here on this foam pad. And that's not looking good. So all this needs to be cleaned out, flushed out really good, and we'll see if we can save it or not. So what that is, is just a lubricant. So I can help wipe this stuff out of here, get it clean. All right, so it's looking really good, but I've got some brake clean. We're gonna go ahead and flush this out again. It's got a little bit more pressure behind it, so it should be do a better, a little bit better job than what we can do with just wiping it down. 
When I bought the axle, it didn't have a breather fitting. There's a plastic fitting that mounts on the back of the housing. And there, you can see the whole daylight through the hole there. That is the hole for the breather. I'm gonna drill this out with a quarter MPT tap. And then I'm gonna put a nipple on the end with a barbed fitting. And that should be a lot more solid than the factory breather. We all know that the plastic fitting that goes in there, it, it always breaks. So we're gonna make it stronger by adding a pipe fitting. All right, so I'm just gonna lube up my drill bit here. And then I'm gonna start drilling. All right, so I'm gonna put some lube on my bit here. I want this in as straight as I can get it. And I'm just gonna work this thing back and forth, let it bite and cut into the material, and then back it off. So it's not the greatest cutting of taps, but I think it's gonna do the job. And I'm pretty happy with that. I got at least at least five, a good five or, you know, five to seven threads, full turns and you should be good. Pretty happy with how far it actually went in. So I'm gonna back this out and clean everything up and then we'll run the pipe nipple into the back of the housing. So this is why I wanted to pipe thread that hole with the breather before I put the carrier and everything back into the housing. It's because a lot of metal shavings and oil and everything is all inside the housing. I'm gonna have to go and do a second cleaning of this. Once I get everything cleaned up, then we'll be ready to install the nipple and get the carrier and bearings back into the housing. All right, so I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It's looking very clean. As you can see, the threads are pretty far back in there, probably about a 3 8 to almost a half of an inch, but not poking all the way out. Teflon tape to seal that off. And then I'm just gonna tighten it with my 9 16 wrench. So there it is, really solid, much better than the factory plastic fitting that tends to break all the time. And yeah, I'm gonna, I'll have this all painted up with the housing and it'll blend right in, much stronger, very happy with that. And I'm getting ready to now clean the carrier. All right, so lots of good news here. I've got everything laid out, ready to be get reassembled. I added some grease to the seals on both sides, on the inside, outside and basically flushed out as much as I could with the brake clean on the tubes. The carrier, the outer end bearings, uh, the caps, and the inner races all look really, really good after everything cleaned up with the brake clean. There's no abnormalities, all just all signs of normal wear. No like uh, burrs, nicks, gulling, scarring of the inner smooth bores of the races. The cages all look square and nothing looks bent or binding. All the rollers look really good on both ends, both bearings. This is the one I was con mainly concerned of. Spider gears, everything looked good in there. I've checked the gears on the pinion, those look good. All the teeth and everything look real sharp and good on the carrier. On ring gear, everything looks good. Um, it's ready to get back to assemble, but first we have to next rebuild the axle shafts. Now right here I have the hub with the axle. I think it's rusted inside of the hub, the splines. I've been soaking it with some PB blaster and I can't get it to even budge. So it's on there really, really good. So I've got a little press. I'm gonna kinda try to see if I can press this thing out right now. And there we have it. Ah, it's out! Yes! All right, so these are the new hubs we have. I am definitely not going to be using the old ones. They, I just don't trust them. <laughs> and they've been sitting a while. I probably bent the hubs while pulling them off. They were stuck on that knuckle. So definitely gonna be putting some new hubs on. So this is my U-joint press. It's a 12 ton shop press. We're gonna be popping out the U-joints with this. It's much better than hammering them out with a hammer. I don't recommend it. If you can get a hold of a press, go ahead and do that. But I do have a video. I'll post a link right here on how to replace U-joints on axle shafts on a Dana 30. I'll leave a link right here. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested. I like to tape cardboard around the stub end of the shafts, both ends, if you can. It helps protect the threads and the splines, which all look pretty good after cleaning everything up with a wire wheel. New Spicer U-joints using the press. All that went together pretty good. The carrier is going back in. I'm gonna get ready to lube up some of these bearings right here and basically just take the oil, get it right onto the bearings. 
and get everything well lubed up. A dab will not do you. And then I'll go to this side and do the same thing. Make sure you're using the same uh, outer race with the same bearing. These thick rubber O-rings. We'll get some oil on those. On the material if you can. That way everything goes in real nice and smooth. We'll start by getting it in here past and this one's going right in so I'm going to press it in you can feel the back backlash that looks pretty good get everything oiled back up and I'm just working the oil into the ring gear now this one has the markings but one other way to know if you're doing this properly is you'll see an inside groove this groove right here that's going to be towards the carrier get the bolts on this one this one has the groove going that direction and the marking is an upside down j on this side i'll go ahead and get these bolts in too so i'll grab my 16 and I'll tighten these up. So the torque specs on the cap bolts are going to be 60 foot pounds. I've got my torque wrench set up for 60. I'm going to go ahead and torque them right now. All right, so the caps are torqued and everything is still spinning freely. We're gonna go ahead and install the axle shafts right now. I'm gonna go ahead and get some assembly lube, just basically gear oil, and I'll lube the splines up and the area where the seal goes and the end of the shaft. We'll go ahead and get this in right now. So I've got the shaft in as far as I can get it by hand. I'm gonna to have to take my pry bar and just push it through the rest of the way. If it's binding up really bad, something is wrong. I should just be able to give it a light push and it go all the way through. There's a flat side and a rounded edge. You want to make the flat side on the back. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Get a little bit more oil in here. So this piece is next, we'll go ahead and install that and then get the shaft in. So there's also a bearing right here. You wanna definitely check that one, make sure it's good and well clean. I already cleaned it up pretty good. And I'm gonna take some grease. This will help uh, keep it lubed up. That's going in. I have this Felpro gasket I'm going to install the cover back on. Um, we're going to be changing the bolts out here later on in the video. I'm going to use the old bolts just because uh, I'm going to be painting this and I don't want to paint my new bolts. So there's going to be a seal on the back of these hubs. You're going to want to add some grease to them just to help keep them lubed up and not dry. And it helps everything with assembly. All right, everyone, the axle shafts are in. Pretty happy with the way that turned out. Now, the three bolts that bolt the hub up, I'm gonna torque those later when the axle's in the vehicle. You just can get more torque on them, especially this nut for the hub. I think this is about 150 foot-pounds. I'll leave uh, 
all the torque specs right here on the video. But uh, everything's going to get torqued when it's on the vehicle. But for now, it's just all snugged up, ready to go. Now, I'm working on this part of the axle. And you may be familiar with pre-9495 Dana 30 axles. They had these central axle disconnecting actuators that are vacuum controlled. And whenever you place the transfer case in four wheel drive, the fork on this actuating device slides over the coupling and permanently locks or locks the inner shaft to the outer shaft, transferring power from the transfer case over to the wheels. I'm not sure who decided to put this CAD device on the axle, but about 1995, they got away with this and they just went straight axles. Hence the real reason why we're gonna be doing this modification is the fact that they were very problematic back in the 90s and sometimes you'll get four wheel drive, sometimes you won't get out of four wheel drive. So today we're gonna be modifying this device to where it permanently locks that sliding collar or coupling from the inner shaft to the outer shaft. And that way the axles are locked, permanently locked full time. Now there is a downside to doing this modification is the first place they even did this was to limit or reduce mechanical resistance up into the drive shaft. Now my drive shaft seems to be balanced. There's some counterweights on the drive shaft. Um, you definitely probably want to stay away from this modification if you do not have a balanced drive shaft. So there is an option as a kit that you can buy that does exactly what we're going to be doing as far as modifications to this device. Uh, they're about 80 bucks. You can buy them on Amazon or just Google search them online. And they're going to basically be a, an alternative for someone who just didn't want to do this type of mod. But for me, I feel like um, I'm pretty confident in doing this modification and I think it's going to have some redundancy in it built into it in case something were to fail or whatnot. So all I did was cut the vacuum diaphragm off, shorten the shaft. There's a brass bushing on the inside. I put a spacer on the inside there, a plastic spacer. That way the shaft bushing can't move in and then um, I added the C-clips back on this one on this side of the shaft and this one on this side of the bushing. Those C-clips are back on and then that keeps the shaft and the bushing in position. Um, and then some redundancy would be adding this through bolt. As you can see, I just drilled a quarter inch hole with a quarter 20 uh, cap bolt. I added a washer and a lock washer, and then I just tightened the bolt so that way the fork cannot move because it's got this hard stop now attached to the fork. This is definitely going to leak, so what I did was I took a 3 8 pipe tap, also threaded that, and then I have a pipe uh, cap here with some Teflon tape, and then I'm just going to go ahead and thread that on there, and that should seal it off, and it looks a lot better, and I shouldn't have any leaks thought it was a simple modification and I want to share with that with you before I button all this up and I just put some RTV between the gasket and that should be enough to seal this thing off so now that the CAD mod is complete there's just a couple more things we can do before we have to paint this one of those is going to be welding on these lower control arm skids I think it's definitely gonna be a great time to do this right now since the axle is out. In the areas that I like to wheel, um, lower control arms are at very high risk um, and it's the least we can do on a budget. These were about 20 bucks for the pair. We'll get these welded on and then since I'm gonna be doing a crossover steer kit, I'm also gonna be drilling out the knuckles. All right, so the skids are on and welded up. I'm really happy with the way those came out. Now it's time to wire wheel this whole axle and get it ready for paint. So here's the wire wheel kit that I picked up. Pretty inexpensive. I've been using a lot of brake clean. It's actually a really good paint prep before you lay down the paint. And then we'll seal up some areas where we don't want paint and start painting it.
This is the paint that I'll be using. It's Primer and Paint the 2X Satin Black. I really like this finish. I've actually painted wheels with this and it's been about three years and it, they're doing fine. I painted my whole trailer with this stuff and it works really, really good. So I'm really happy with this paint. I'm gonna continue to use it for this axle. Uh, before we lay down the paint, we'll wipe everything down with some alcohol. And then also just keep in mind, you're gonna wanna use a good painter's mask when painting, definitely, Use safety, wear a mask. All right, so Project Dana 30 front axle is complete. I am ready to get this thing installed underneath that XJ. Uh, you're probably questioning up why some of the parts didn't get replaced is because they simply just didn't need to. Uh, the upper and lower ball joints all looked really good when I checked them, and they are actually not factory. They're moved upper and lower ball joints called problem savers. They're actually some decent ball joints, so I went ahead and left those alone. And because this is a budget, build i kind of gambled on all the internals inside the housing like seals and bearings when i inspected everything they all turned out really good so again this is somewhat of a refresh not a restoration but uh, i'm really happy with the way everything came out as far as a junkyard axle for 100 bucks um, we did have to you know put some money into the axle but i think it goes well with the theme for the budget build xj so without further ado, we're going to end the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video, getting everything refreshed as far as axle ready to go into the Jeep. And we will see you on the next video. Hopefully we'll be installing a lift by then. And I have some really fun stuff coming up on the channel. So we'll see you guys then. Have a good day.